Are pools also getting more popular or less popular? Less popular. Pools are getting less popular. <laughs> All right, so we are back with our next episode of our So Far So Good, and uh, right now we are in our Propdelin Brothers podcast studio, and uh, today we have a very special guest, and uh, that is the founder of B and E Group. Now, uh, B and E Group specializes especially in landed construction projects, and uh, we have Bobby here with us. Welcome, Bobby. Welcome, Hello. Bobby. Hey, Hello. thank you, thank you for uh, coming on to our podcast studio. So, uh, Bobby, maybe for uh, the sake of our audience, just uh, give uh, probably a, a brief introduction about yourself, and then what do you, what do your company specialize in? Oh, I'm specialized right. in building landers, main con and development. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. And and how many years um have you been in the in the landed business? Twenty two years. Twenty two years. Wow, wow. That's a long time, man. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> okay. And uh, and um, for uh, your company itself, I uh, understand that um, you you guys specialize in all sorts of landed projects. That means um starting from whether is it A and A, just a renovation mm. or the tear down and rebuild. So um, maybe just for, for understanding like, like you know, uh, especially for lender itself, um, how, how many, how many so-called like um, projects, you know, like, like do you guys handle um, like all the time? You know, what is, what is like, what is, oh. what, yeah, what is, what per is year that? we will be handling at least eight to 10 projects. La, and okay. we are professional in submission and build. Right. right. Yeah. Right. So do you all do like everything from the start to finish, as in the whole process? Correct. Uh, from submission to handover, TOP, CSC stage. Right. Mm, I right. see. That's yeah. uh, probably a uh, very hassle-free for your clients. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. So actually, Bobby has been. Um, um, we have known each other for a couple of years already. Um, yes. they have also helped couple of our clients with their reconstruction project mm. so um, I think it's a very hassle free process because if let's say somebody needs help with mm. um, after they have bought a, a old landed property and then they have plans to tear down and rebuild basically they can just go to Bobby and say that hey uh, can you help me with everything you know from the start all the way to the end so Bobby uh, you guys covered um, the architecture drawing yes uh, BCA submission application correct everything yeah. everything so it's a one stop kind of solution correct Okay, great. Yeah, and um, today's main intention of getting Bobby on our studio is because we want to ask him a lot about uh, landed reconstruction and uh, especially for um, people who are planning to buy landed properties, uh, whether you have any questions about the ENA process, questions about rebuild process, Bobby is the best person that we can ask from. And I mean, up to today, I mean, although myself and Adrian have been in the market for 14 years, sometimes there are small little blind spots that uh, we will still seek his advice because he's the expert on the ground. Yes. So, uh, Bobby, are you ready for a series of questions? Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I've uh, preempted Bobby that today's session is insufficient to ask him everything about landed uh, property. So we want to invite him for a second session. But uh, today we'll just kickstart with whatever we can ask you. All right. Okay, okay great. So, uh, Bobby, uh, maybe uh, just to start off with uh, I think one very important thing is that especially when uh, a buyer is buying a landed property, um, we we always advise that, you know, before even putting down the check, um, there has to be some drawings that we usually want to purchase first, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, what are some of the very important drawings to purchase as a buyer point of view before we even put down the first 1% option fee? Well, um, oh, probably, yeah. Uh, first of all, I think best to check all the red line, which is example like road line plan sewage plan drainage plan right yeah, and bca drawing right yeah, try to gather all these things before putting a check mm. right right yeah. um uh, understand that uh, the red line work for the uh, reserve that's uh, pretty important uh how about the sewage and the um the the, the other pipelines that uh, will affect the purchase mm, yeah. also important they are all linked Oh, yeah, okay. if you don't purchase before you put a 1%, lawyer will purchase as well. Right. Right. So by then, maybe it's a bit too late la, right. for them to know. Right. Uh, right. Then they have to forfeit their 1%. Right. Yeah. Right. So uh, what Bobby means is that um, if in the event, if let's say you go ahead and buy a property, a landed property, you put on a 1% option fee and you do not purchase any of this plan, your law firm that's representing you in the conveyancing, they will still help you to purchase it Correct. during your option period before you exercise the option. Yeah. yeah, lawyer will make known to buyer. 
Right, but by yeah. then probably there's some things that they will make known to you that probably you might be uncomfortable, right? So yeah. maybe, um, Bobby, what are some of the very common case studies, like you know, on the road line plan or the sewage plan, and how does it affect the decision of the buyer, and 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 why are these things important? Oh, if there's a red line, then you affect the uh, setback, mm. so the building becomes smaller. Yes, right. yeah, setback can be front, back, and side. Right? Correct. I see. Yeah, can be either side. Yeah. Right, and that's the road yeah. line plan. Road line plan. Right, yeah. right. So that means um, this setback will kick in if you want to do reconstruction, correct? Tear down and rebuild, right? Yes. Right. So yeah. uh, the road line plan is the number one plan to purchase. So make sure that you are comfortable with the setback if there is a road line mm. uh, reserve. Reserve The road line plan will show the category of road, the road reserve. Mm. So yeah, this will determine how much setback the building line is going to be. Right. 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 Yeah. right. So by looking at it offhand, you can't tell. Right, yeah, definitely. Right. How yeah. about like the sewage plan? Why is it important? Mm, the sewage plan will indicate the sewer line and the manhole. Okay. And again, it will affect the building design. Oh, okay. Yeah, if there's a manhole, means you have to build all around the manhole, open right. to sky, one point yes. five meter around. Right. So mm. if fall inside the building, uh, then it will have a problem. If the manhole is inside the building. Yeah. Right. It will have a problem. Yeah. Okay. What What sort of problem would that be? You cannot build over the manhole. I see. Mm. Yeah. It means cannot be covered. Yeah. yeah, must open to sky. Okay, yeah. so that means yeah. open all the way from level one to sky. Correct. Yeah. yeah, which means that probably you need to have an air well or something. Correct. Yeah. Right. In yeah. case it choke, uh, the crane will be able to go in. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, right. I, uh, I think we have seen a couple of our uh, landers. Uh, mainly the sewage will be at the kitchen side. Yeah, mostly is behind. Behind or some of them in their carport area. Yeah, car park area a bit rare. Mostly yeah. it's behind yeah. or back lane. Back lane. Yeah, and only few houses will have one. Right. right. Yeah. Well, only few houses only have one. Yeah, one oh, whole row maybe have two or three. Right. Yeah, right. Not every house have. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. So okay. if uh, there's a main hole in the middle of the house, then the uh, buyers have to be aware, lah. Yeah. Most well, buyer don't. Want. Mm, yeah. Yes, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And uh, road line sewage. What is the the third kind of plan? Uh, that you drainage, uh. drainage. Drainage. Okay. Yeah. Why why is that important? What what's okay. the probably the case studies you've drainage seen? Drainage reserve is quite common for some areas, mm -hmm. especially at the front or behind there's a canal or whatever. Right. Mm. Yeah, they will have a huge setback. Right. Yeah. Right. Reserve. Okay. And yeah. and that, that setback will happen in the event of the government want to expand the drainage. Correct. Okay. So, so when you submit for redevelopment, the line will be affected. Oh, I yeah, see. Meaning, if there's a reserve for one meter, your setback will be eight point five instead of seven point five. Right. Mm. So you lose up one meter. Right. right. Yeah. Right. So all this red line, uh, whether is it road or whether is it sewage, this is important because especially if you want to rebuild, right? Yeah. Uh, how about because sometimes buyers will ask, what if the government initiates, like example, they want to expand the road. They want to expand the drainage. What is going to happen to your existing property if even if you do not rebuild? Don't rebuild. They will buy over from you. So they will buy over that yeah. that land from you. Correct. Right. Okay. But if you rebuild, you have to create that setback first. Yes. Right. Understand? For rebuild cases only, they want you to set back first. In any case, they were to extend, they won't they don't have to pay the damages. Right. Yeah. I see. I see. The right. Provision first lah. Right, yeah, right. Yeah. So the setback is to future proof the house, like in Correct. A sense. Okay, understand. Great. Yeah, that's 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 great information. And uh I think as uh, as a buyer for landed properties, uh it is very important that all these are being purchased, uh as what Bobby mentioned, and so that you yourself will know, you know, what are some of the implications in the event you want to rebuild in future or you want to rebuild it straight away. So these are very important plans. And um how about like elevations and roof plans? This will come in whereby you need to do some renovation, extension, and so on, but not for rebuild. Not for rebuild. Yeah. Uh. Okay. Extension and renovation, you will need the elevation plan. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. So uh, yeah. Talking about elevation, uh, how about retaining wall? And uh, for some of the property that's uh, probably on the higher side, uh, how does this uh, retaining wall comes about? Retaining wall. Yeah. To protect the soil. Correct. Correct. But yeah. uh, the cost will be under the buyer. Buyer, oh, buyer. La, whoever is going to build the house. La. I see, I see. Mm. Right, right. And um, come, uh, okay, so Adrian talked about retaining wall. How about, um, let's, 
maybe just dive in on the purchase process as well. So apart from the drawings, uh, in your point of view, let's say somebody is buying a, a landed property today with an intention to rebuild. Other than all these drawings, right? What are probably some blind spots that you will usually advise your clients to look for before they put down the check? Are there any other blind spots that? Uh, mm, mainly the three plans. Mm-hmm. Yeah, road line, drainage, and sewage. Yeah. These yes. three plans are very mainly important. yeah for mm-hmm. rebuild. Right. Okay. This act as an X-ray for the property Right. Right. Yeah. Right. And uh, what is the average like costing nowadays to rebuild? Um, maybe we start off with an uh, interterrace, right? Mm. Let's say to build interterrace, uh, and then the semi D and D chat. Like what? What are the the costing of rebuild? Mm, basic for inter two thousand square feet is about one million. Mm-hmm. Semi D about three thousand square feet is about one point four million. One point four. Yeah. Right. How it's about subject to whether there's piling, mm. all these things. Yeah. Right. Whether there's a basement and things. Correct. Okay. Basic uh, is one million to one point four. Mm. Right. For interterrace lah. Two thousand square feet as in the the land or the build up. Land. The land. Yeah. Land size. Okay. So for one mil, uh, a two thousand square feet interterrace, uh, how much build up can we we get out of this rebuild? Build up two thousand. It's about five thousand. Five thousand. Yeah, five thousand. Yeah. Right. That means we are talking about uh two hundred dollars per square foot. Can. Is uh yeah, for about the re- there. Okay. It's about there. Right. But the five thousand will include probably like the top attic level having a roof terrace and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. How about the actual like livable roughly estimated is? Uh, gross floor area will be. About three thousand five. Three thousand five. Yeah. Okay, and then the rest of the the space will be roof terrace and and all that kind of uh provisions. Yeah, uh, open space. Open space, uh. yep. Okay, and like because nowadays, um, whenever a rebuild happens, the houses will look very big, right? And yeah, it's it's all built up to the max. Like giant houses. Giant houses. <laughs> right. and so I mean, we have seen like more and more giant houses coming up, especially in the past ten years. How many bedrooms usually like do you think for a inter terrace is the favorite specs of uh, five um, minimum, minimum five bedroom. Right? Yep. Okay. How about um other things like a lift is a uh, preferably getting more in trend now. Like will be, lift is a definite for nowadays rebuild. Right. Yeah. Right. So so most buyers are uh, inching towards having a lift already. Yeah. Right. Probably because Singapore is like an aging population, they they want yeah. future proof. For right? rebuilding, most client will put in a lift. Right. Mm. Yeah. Right. Five bedrooms and how many bathrooms? Six or seven. Six or seven yeah. with all en suite and uh, two common Correct. and stuff. Right. Okay. So the trend now is like minimum five bedrooms rebuilt mm. with a lift, uh, more bathrooms and stuff. Right. Um, are pools also getting more popular or less popular? Less popular. Pools oh. are getting less popular. Oh, okay. Why, why, why yeah. do you say that? Like, what uh, do you, what normally do you think? they don't use. La. Oh, it's <laughs> not a cost issue. La. Space yeah. issue. Space. Yeah, they don't use. Right. Yeah. Right. So more and more people are opting not to have pools. Right. No. Okay. That's Leaf interesting. Is a must, know. but not the pool. Yeah, right. I, I kind of agree with you, Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. And um, like uh, other than the pool, the lift, what other new kind of things that do you think, uh, based on your experience, you know, like, is the popular trend right now for the spec of a house mm, after rebuild space, la. Okay. Honestly speaking, because they are looking at resale value future. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So they have to build to the maximum. They're looking at space. Right. Yeah. And leave lah. Like, that's all. Okay. Yeah. Right. So so you mentioned okay inter terrace, about five thousand square feet um of uh GFA right mm. and then the livable is about three thousand five five right. bedrooms, then the uh, semi D is about one point four. Yep. Around mm. there. How about like for a detached? Let's say the land is, uh maybe about, uh five thousand. Mm. Land is five thousand. Uh, how much can the build up be? Five thousand uh gross row will be two thousand five times three level. Okay. Because fifty percent of the land size that you can build for bungalows. Right. Mm. Yeah. Right. So two thousand five times three levels. Uh, for gross row. Yep. Okay, that's about seven thousand five. Yeah. Right. And uh, roughly based on seven thousand five uh of gross floor plus uh three five thousand of land, right? How much would the, the re- reconstruction cost about be? About minimum is three million for a bungalow. Right. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So we're talking about one mil, one point four to probably one point eight, and then about three mil for bungalows. Yeah. Right. And maybe um just to uh share with our audience, like you know, how do you roughly offhand calculate the max you know GFA that you can build so oh. that 
like when you're on the ground, you look at properties, then how do you like, you know, roughly have the estimation in your mind? Mm, through experience. Normally we will, yeah, so used to it that for inter terrace, uh, normally it's about 2,000, mm. semi 3,000, bungalow is 5,000. So we used to calculate this kind of figure every day. Mm, I yeah, see. So offhand we can give an estimation. Right, right. But is there like a formula like to calculate the, the gross floor area? Let's say let's say we already know that, you know, this plot of this area is about like a two story mixed landed. Mm. Right. So and then we go and see a semi D. Right. Um do we is there a formula to gauge like if I were to rebuild, what's the max yeah. that I can go? I need to have the plot width and plot depth first, then mm. minus of all the setback, mm. then we'll calculate from there. I right. see. Yeah. I see. Plot width and plot depth I need. Okay. Mm. Right. So usually that's that's the that's the main method. Yeah. Okay, great. All right. So uh moving on to the next question, like you know, um let me have a look. Okay, maybe just a explanation for uh layman form, right? What do we mean by plot ratio when it comes to landed properties? Oh, this is more master plan. <laughs> right. Right. So when it comes to plot ratio, meaning that you feel this plot is eligible to build uh private property apartments. Mm. Yeah. Let's say it's 1.4, 2.8. That will determine how many story that you can build for apartments. Right. Provided you have 10,000 square feet minimum. Mm. Right. Yeah. So right. it is a landed for under plot ratio. Automatically, the plot ratio will converted, will be converted to 3.5 story mixed landed. Mm. So meaning max is 3.5 story for landed properties that fall on, fall on plot ratio. Right. Yeah. Mm. Right, right. Okay. So plot ratio doesn't come in for landed. Right. Yeah, it's mm. more for apartments. Uh. More for apartments. Yeah. Uh. So, but you have to convert the plot ratio into three story mixed landed if you're going to build a landed in this right. plot. Yeah. Right. Understand. And um of course, uh I think one of the very important questions that a lot of buyers will ask is that let's say, you know, you, you go on the ground, you have a look at a few landed properties and then uh, you do not intend to rebuild. Let's say you do not intend to rebuild. Maybe just to do a bit of renovation mm -hmm. um, and then you see something you like. But then uh, probably you notice, you know, there's something that probably the, the current owner might have done um, to the property itself that might not be um, an approved kind of um, construction, right? Or maybe there was a, a covering or mezzanine what are some of some of some examples of of this type of like unauthorized uh, kind of uh, add-ons uh, that is on the ground? Uh, they will eat into the normal setback like frontage. Instead of having seven point five, they build outwards. Mm. So the setback become five meters. Right. So the two point five is unauthorized. Right. For the backyard, there's a setback two meter back to back unit. Mm. Right. And then some they can close it up. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But <laughs> there there is there any back lane behind? If there's a back lane behind, the two meter setback can be covered. Right. If it's a back to back unit, you can't. But mm. a lot of them also will cover. Mm. Right. So internal void also, uh, there are some new development, there will be a lot of void. So when new buyers go in, they will cover the void without doing any application. Right. So that is called unauthorized work. Right, mm. right. Yeah. So what are the, um, the risks to the buyer? Let's say you like that property, you like the way that it is done, um, and then the owner would like to sell as it is. Mm -hmm. All right. And um, what are the risks to the buyer if you were to buy over such property with mm -hmm. with unauthorized work that you are already aware of? And let's say the, the seller is very candid. The seller openly declares to you and say, hey, I want to sell as it is. I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to apply. All right. Um, if you want, you buy like this, right? Yeah. What is the risk to the buyer? Uh, buyer, first of all, have to undertake all the unauthorized work. So all this work will belong to the new buyer. Mm. Okay. So in future, if any complaint, authority want them to reinstate or resubmission, they have to bear the cost. Right. Yeah, right. for reinstatement and resubmission. Mm. Right. Yeah. Right. And so of course, when they sell to the future new buyer, they also have to make known to the new buyer. Right. Yeah. Right. So this will go on. This will go on. Yeah. Uh. Okay. <laughs> and uh, what is your advice? Let's say if uh, your friend is the buyer, mm -hmm. buying a property, you go down and take a look, okay, and then you, you spot some unauthorized work, yeah. right? What is your advice to your friend? If no structural issue, my advice is uh, you can buy with it. 
Okay. If no structure issue, mm. if okay. there is structure issue, then uh, it's better for the owner to reinstate before they sell. Right. Yeah. Right. What are examples of structure issues? Uh, some they DIY the loft mm. extension. They don't use the proper specs. Mm. Yeah. So okay. this will cause danger. Right. Yeah. Right. The thing will fall off. Yeah. Not enough uh, strength. Right. Yeah. This kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So and then if if the buyer undertakes it, mm -hmm. they take over it. Uh, you mentioned that the risk is that in future, when they sell, they might face an obstacle. Yes. Right? And um, if any authorities, of course, would do check and stuff like that, mm. they will have to buy the. Uh, they, they will have to, have to reinstate. Yeah, reinstate or do a submission. Right. Right. And yeah. are submissions very expensive? Yeah, very expensive, especially for small item. Right. Okay. Yeah. Example. Uh, just to submit a covering of void, changing of main roof. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are called small item. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, uh, Bobby, you mentioned like covering of void, right? Uh, are we talking about like your living room? Let's say your living room has a uh, very high double volume, double yeah. volume, and then you want to cover and use that space upstairs, Correct. right? Correct. Okay. Roughly based on like that, how much is the submission? It just professional fee is already thirty thousand. Wow. Right. Yeah. But if you're going to submit a rebuild, professional fee is fifty thousand. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Can you imagine the difference? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. So it's like thirty to fifty K just uh for submission of paperwork. Correct. But for rebuild it's fifty K. Right. It's a rebuild submission. Mm. Yeah. Right. Right. How how yeah. many percent financing based on experience like nowadays the recon loan? Recon is about eighty percent. Eighty percent, yeah. Okay. So they they put it in the twenty percent correct kind of like down payment concept. Yeah. and take the rest so they will have to pay two sets of installments mm. yeah right okay understand and usually like what is the repayment period for recon loan recon is one year right okay what happened is they will take the uh, construction loan will last only for one year mm. right so after one year the bank will convert the construction loan to mortgage oh. i see so they'll add on inside you'll be having two mortgage loan right yeah right so uh, that one year is basically um, as a recon loan, but do you have to start paying the installment already? Mm, no. So they will just loan you first yeah. for you to reconstruct it. Correct. Then after that, they will just lump this inside as part of your mortgage. Yeah, they will convert the construction loan into mortgage. Right. Yeah, only lasts for one year. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. And uh, that's the most common way of financing. Correct. Usually a Very common. Right. And um, okay, we also recently have you know like increased amount of inquiries and questions right from our clients is that um, in the event like usually uh, based on your experience you know like um, if um, uh, a smaller developer I mean usually like they will buy old landed properties and then they will they will rebuild themselves and then they will sell it to the market um, usually how do people structure this kind of setup Mm -hmm. I didn't get you. Uh, like example, let's say if somebody is interested to get into the reconstruction kind of um, business, right? As in to buy old landed properties, mm -hmm. rebuild, after they will sell it to the market. <coughs> How do they structure this kind of set setup um, so that it becomes like more like a business? Oh, yeah. No, this is quite difficult. Right. Because why, why is it difficult? Uh, costing wise. Okay. Mm -hmm. Building cost high and you got uh, stamp duty 4%. Mm. And you have to take a bank loan fifty percent from the bank, right? So interest also incurred, mm. so everything goes up, right? Mm. So at the end of the day, does not profit well. Yeah, margin is quite uh, yeah limited. Uh. Yeah, right. so nowadays is quite difficult. Mm. Right. So the yeah. bank loan will still loan you fifty percent. Uh, for development project, yes, you the loan only can take fifty percent. Right. Mm. Maximum. How about the ABSD? Like within how many years do you need to sell? Oh, within three years you have to get rid of the property. Within three years from the date Correct. that you buy, uh. including the construction period. Including. Right. Yeah. And if you don't get rid, how much is your ABSD for a developer, like a mini developer? This one. This one I will check with the bank. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, right. So uh but there's ABSD incurred yeah. if you don't get rid within three years and stuff. So the, the time is a factor. Mm. Right. Okay. And uh do how about yourself? Do you do you do this kind of like um reconstruction project? to resell it to the market or buy and sell nowadays we we don't do right got the costing wise right, mm -hmm. right so you mainly focus on your your business correct per se okay great understand and um 
So, uh, yeah, Adrian, you got any other questions? Maybe to. Yep. Um, key. Retouch units. Wait, uh. Um, okay, so uh, maybe probably we can talk a bit about uh, the subdivision of our properties. Mm -hmm. um, example, like, you know, you buy a detached house and then uh, whether what's the possibility of uh, being subdivided and uh, do we need to look at any frontage or what's the minimum plot size of the, the house? Yeah, do you have uh, any advice on that? Oh, mainly it's for the small bungalow to subdivide into a pair of semi. Yeah. It's the most common one. Mm. I see. Yeah, the rest too big also quite difficult because of the development charges. Right. Oh, yeah. I see. How much is the development charges nowadays? Like, uh, what is the calculation method? Or mm. is it a percentage or? PSF is about one thousand mm. dollars, which means that you are when you do a submission for subdivision, you are able to give you a baseline to build. Mm. Let's say the baseline is five thousand, but your submission wise is six thousand. So mm. you have an additional of six uh, one thousand above the baseline. Yes. So the one thousand square feet will times one thousand dollars. Oh. Right. It's about one million. Yeah, it's about one million. Oh. So the DC charge will be one million. Right. Oh. Yeah, per unit. Right. Yeah. Right. And the and because of this, back to the previous question is that nowadays the trend to build and sell has dropped. Because the DC charge has increased tremendously. Correct. Right. Right. What What do you think? Um, there's such a ruling. Uh, is it is, was it because like in previous year this was very rampant or like what? what why uh, do you think this? Oh, along subdivision there will be a DC charges likewise. That's like the condo. Mm. Yeah. Right. You develop more than one unit, they will, uh, they will charge you the DC. Right. Right. And um, do you think it's still worth it to do it? Like to do subdivision mm -hmm. if your land is big enough? If profitable, then yes. Okay. Yeah, depend on district. Right. Yeah. And depend on your purchase price. Correct. Right. And how much potentially after build up you can exit and stuff. Yeah. Right. Or if it's really like uh, families that just want to stay beside one another and they want to build two different houses yep. for multi generation, then definitely they will go for it. Yep. Right. Okay, great. How about like um, the term that uh, you previously used just now on the rebuilding process, right? There's, there's two things that will happen at the end of the project, which is TOP and CSC, right? What is the core difference between these two? Oh, TOP is whereby you can move in first. Mm. CSC is you need to gather all the documents like LTA, MPAR, all the relevant submission to come in. Right. That was only for paperwork action. Right. Yeah. And that will be taken care of by your builder. Correct. Right. And usually for landed properties, unlike uh strata condominiums, right? Uh landed properties, TOP to CSC is how long usually? Three to six months. Three to six months. Yeah, huh? subject to authority how fast they react. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. And uh why why are these two uh what is the, the important point of these two things? Like after these two are achieved um, what are what are some of the, the flexibility that you will have as an owner? Flexibility actually, uh, nothing to do with the owner. Right. Just the TOP will do. The right. most important thing is that they can move in first. Okay. Then for CSE is more for paperwork because authority need time to, so called approve the plan, yeah to give us the every department has to give us the CSE. Then we compile all the CSE we submit to BCA. Right. Then BCA will give us the master CSE. Right. Mm. So it's all because of timing. Right. So we obtain a TOP for owner to stay in first. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Great. Yeah. Adrian. Yep. Mm. Okay. Yeah, maybe when Adrian is thinking of a question, I, I want to ask you this question. You know now <laughs> there's there's this new thing called uh the envelope kind of um, there's this lingo in the market, mm -hmm. the new envelope concept, right? What is what what does that mean? Uh, when it comes to rebuilding, um, there's this new. Was there this new ruling called like you know you can build the envelope version or something like that? Yeah. Okay. There uh, is. Okay. What what is it called? Is it am, am I saying the right thing? The envelope thing or like what, what was that th that term? Uh, envelope control. Envelope control. Yeah. Okay. What does it mean? Like means uh example like. If it's a two-story mixed lender, mm. you will have an envelope control, you have an attic in additional. Okay. Uh, for a bonus. 
So that one call envelope home too. Okay. So what, what does this mean to the buyer when they rebuild? Is it a, uh, you mentioned it's a bonus. What kind of bonus? Like previously mm. before the envelope control and after this, right? What is the, the, the benefit? Uh, additional flaws. Additional flaws? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, like can you elaborate? Like how, how does? Uh, instead of having two story, we will add it, you are allowed to build a loft, a mezzanine floor. Okay. So yeah. previously, you can only build two story. So let's say when we talk about a two story landed, Technically, you can build up to two and a half, right? Yeah. Okay, then with envelope control, you can build two and a half plus a mezzanine level. Correct. And this mezzanine level is located where? Uh, above the first story, in between one and two. Oh, okay. And the whole, you can occupy the whole space? Uh, two thirds of the floor space. Right. Anything more subject to approval. Right, right. Yeah. So, first level, then as you go up to level two, that's a mezzanine level. Correct. It's actually a, a one story. It's one story by itself, but Correct. it's two third of that level. Yeah, minimum uh, max minimum two third you can go. Like. Anything above, you can apply. Subject to approval. Yeah. And then after that, then you go up to the second level. Correct. And then after you go to your attic level. Yes. So technically you have like two story plus half plus half. Correct. Right. And is it getting very popular? Like people want to build in this manner? Mm, okay la, 20-30% will because it's something new la. right yeah some clients will go for it right yeah. right and is the cost much higher with yeah, this will be okay like roughly how about how 100k difference for that mezzanine level yeah oh that's it's pretty worth it for worth it, worth it. Right. if you convert to PSF per square foot it's very little right mm, yeah okay and then um, with this right with this um because of that mezzanine level, usually that level, what do people build it to be? Like, is it uh, extra bedrooms or extra like family yeah. area? Or Normally, like? it will be a bedroom and a study area. Mm. Okay, so you technically can create more bedrooms. Correct. Right. Okay. I think I think there's a. Well, when did this rule came about? Like, mm, I think should be two zero one eight. Two zero. So just yeah. recent. Uh, yeah. The past one and a half years. Yeah. Right. Okay, that's interesting. And, and why do you think um, the government allowed this? Like, was it because they, they want more flexibility in design? or Yeah, they just want to try out. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So if the things go well, they won't stop. Mm. I see. Yeah. I Is see. it uh, in the same period as uh, like those um, attic you can cover up and also uh, like the car porch, yeah. you can also um, build up Correct. to the car porch as yeah, well? Yeah, it's something better, mm. some improvement. Yeah, at least uh, there's more space to the uh, property itself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. So uh, maybe we can uh, touch on uh, um, about uh, works before the uh, building constructions. Mm -hmm. I think uh, there's some surveys that we uh, we can look at uh, the pre-construction survey mm -hmm. and the topo geographical survey. So uh, maybe you can share with our audience uh, what are these two surveys about? Oh, topo survey is for submission purpose. Okay. Whereby you need to do a setting up to find where is your boundary line mm. yeah where is your building line mm. yeah, what is the platform level kind of thing so this the post survey will actually show everything inside i see and we need this to submit to ura mm. uh, and pre-con is to take pictures uh, on your neighbor's house right uh, around 10 meter around your your own units. Ten, uh, right. ten meters. Yeah, ten meters all mm. around your own units. Right. Yeah, right. This is protect all party in case anything happened during the construction. Yes. So right. what yeah. happened if the neighbors uh, suddenly like found hey, there's a um, crack in my roof or maybe on my wall? So uh, what will happen? Uh, do I say insurance cover? All this will be shown inside the pre-con. Oh, mm. I see. Yeah, will be before or after straight away you know. Okay. If it's not inside the pre-con then it's of course damaged by us yeah. right. whoever the builder is doing oh. yeah if it's reflected in the in the pre-con survey mm. that means it's before mm. right. yeah so okay. as evidence for all parties right so this is important because when you want to do rebuild yeah. you also want to maintain good relationship with your neighbors uh, right. even right. though renovation or i also advise my client to take left and right neighbors mm. okay yeah right that means you do all these surveys first and yes okay and just to protect everybody yes. yeah Okay, great. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I think we, we have had uh, 
uh, a lot of very technical questions uh, that Bobby has helped us to answer. And mm-hmm. actually, we still have about 10 questions for him. Yes. But I don't think we can finish in one session. Right. And uh, that's why we would like to invite Bobby back for a second round. But um, before we end off, maybe Bobby just want to understand, uh, you know, based on your experience as, a, as, as one of the experts in landed reconstruction, uh, as a builder in the market over the past 22 years is that what about your personal preference you know like um if you were to buy a house today mm-hmm. right uh you know in the market there is of course some differences in different types of housing um also in in the past 10 years strata houses has came out to be uh, of course one of the hybrid choice between a condo and a landed and then of course there's pure landed that you are very experienced in how about your personal choice like you know um, will you buy a strata property, a strata house, or definitely is you will definitely go for pure landed and you will yeah. definitely rebuild? For my case, is pure landed. Pure landed, yeah. Okay, why is that so? Like, uh, first of all, I'm used to it. Then, mm. of course, all these houses can be passed on to my children. Mm. Right. Yeah, so don't have to bother, you know, too small or the price will go down. Right. Yeah. Right. And over the 22 years, right? Um, do you think that landed, pure landed properties uh, are a good form of investment? Yeah, definitely it's a good investment. Right. Has you ever seen the land price come down before? Not yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it has always went up? Yeah, it's either slowly or quickly. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but it has never came down? No. Always go up. Yeah. Okay. And uh, we always share with our audience, like when you buy a pure landed property, you are not only buying the land, uh, you're also buying the building. You're yep. also buying the potential to rebuild. You're also buying the flexibility to uh, renovate the interior or do a and a or to tear down and rebuild in future, right? So, uh, apart from land that you mentioned, it has never came down. Mm-hmm. It's either you, it rise, it appreciates yeah. quickly or gradually. Yeah. Uh, how about the building costs? Like from uh, twenty two years ago until now, what do you see is the difference between the rebuild? cost of an inter-terrace last time and now. Like also keep going up but slowly. Mm. Gradually. Yeah, correct. Right. Okay, so just like 10 years back, uh, 2010, Ten. okay, hmm. what is the cost to rebuild an inter-terrace? Different now, from now is 200,000 difference. Oh. So it's like 800k last correct. time. Correct. Now it's 1 mil. Yeah. Right. So it is very gradual. Correct. It's the same kind of work but the difference will be 200,000 10 years ago and, and now. now. Yep. Right. So how about like five years ago? Not much difference. Five years ago. Also gradually. Also gradually. Yeah. Right? Okay. Then Never how come down. The, again, the price don't come down. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's mainly based on um, manpower costing. Correct. Construction costing, inflation yeah. and stuff. Right. Okay. How about 20 years back? Like 20, year 2000. How much does it cost to rebuild? Year 2000. Even cheaper. Okay. Yep. It will be like 500,000 to rebuild into terrace. Mm, maybe it's about 600. Yes. Right, yeah. right. So it's like a probably about thirty percent, twenty thirty percent, twenty percent over yep. ten years, uh. Right. Okay. And uh, will you ever A and A a house to live, or you will definitely not A and A? You will definitely rebuild your own house. Uh, own house. I will rebuild. You definitely will rebuild. Yep. Okay. About run down and rebuild. Mm. Right. Okay. So um. The rebuild definitely will be based on your opinion, one of the best kind of option to go based on the design, the flexibility and stuff. Lah. Okay, so maybe to end off, let's say somebody is looking to rebuild um, a semi D, a semi D, land size maybe about 3,005, uh, there about land size. Okay. Uh, apart from the lift, um, apart from the lift, which, is, which you think is a must have for the future, Semi-detached standard um, with uh, intention for this, this client to exit in future. La. Maybe let's say 10 years later they want to sell, right? So what are some of the things that you recommend to build into the house so that in future when they want to sell is more acceptable by the next buyer? Oh, next buyer for sure is only renovation. Okay. Yeah, you build to the maximum and with uh, very important is the leaf. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with all these things, it's good enough. How for many bedrooms values. for semi D? Semi D, yeah. mm. six to seven anytime. Mm. Preferably six to seven, uh, not less than six. Uh. No. Okay, great. And also, are granny rooms very important on level one? If you have a lift, then it's not important. Mm. Okay, <laughs> right. So, so now some designs they do away with the granny room already. Yeah. Okay, because of the concept of the lift. 
Correct. Then the first level is more for hosting purposes. Mm. So we try to move up all the rooms mm. and use the space for hosting. Right, mm. right. Yeah. Great. And I think uh, probably the next round when Bobby comes back, right, we'll invite Bobby to bring along some of his latest design mm-hmm. uh, for your new landed projects. Then um, we can share with the audience, like, you know, what is the current trend right now mm-hmm. of um, the, the trend of rebuilding and then for inter-terraces, MED, and then detached homes. Yeah, so uh, any last questions for Bobby, Adrian? No, I think uh, that's quite a handful of uh, information oh. for <laughs> us and our clients. Yeah. Right, <laughs> yeah. And uh, actually, uh, Bobby has been featured in some of our video home tours as well. Uh, recently, we have one, uh, which is a, a detached home in Juchet. Uh, Bobby has given some ideas and we have some upcoming landed properties as well that will be launched in our home tour. So uh, usually what we do is that we'll get uh, Bobby to advise, you know, what is the potential to build up this place to be, what is the, the reconstruction cost. He has also helped us a lot with uh, some of the landed reports that we pass on to our buyers when they come for physical viewing. So Bobby has been a great help to property brothers and uh, with that, nah, I think we should we should uh, probably end off the first session and uh, Bobby have maybe just to uh, close off the session, right? Any uh, word of advice for people that is looking for a landed now? Oh, yeah, uh, I think it's the right time to buy landed property now. Okay. Yeah, before the price goes up. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. So you you think the price will will increase? Will, will yeah. increase? Right. But again, uh, gradually, as what you said. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. Thanks, Bobby. Thank Thanks. you, Bobby. Thanks for your time.